Today we're going to look at some of the things that you can do with dates in Excel. We're going to look at some of the functions and doing calculations with dates. Um, and as an example, we're going to create a perpetual calendar so that what you do is type in the month of the year and the year and it will generate for you the calendar with the first appearing in the, in the right place uh, underneath the, 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 the day names. Um, I've done a little bit of preparation. I've got a month sheet uh, with a range that's got just a list of the months and I've named that range months. If you've never named a range before all you have to do highlight the range and then type the name into the name box and hit enter and that names the range. And we're going to use that in a formula in a moment uh, so let's have a look. I've already also set up data validation uh, on cell B1 so that there's a drop down using that range uh, and you can pick the month from the uh, from the drop down. So the first thing that we want to do is calculate uh, the first of the month and for that we are going to use uh, one of the uh, date functions and this one is actually called date so I type in equals date open brackets and you can see you get uh, help. There's three things in the brackets. The first thing is the year which is just what's been typed into cell C1 there. So I'll click on that and it puts it in for me. Now the month, we've got the word August but what we need to do is match that in the list of months. So I'm going to use the function called match what am I matching? I'm matching that word. Where am I looking it up? I'm looking it up in uh, in the range that's called months. So if I just start typing, I can type the range name in if I want to. Now that's okay if you can remember it. In 2007, if you can't remember it, you get a helpful prompt underneath where you're typing. Um, but you don't get that in 2003. But there is a way of doing it without having to remember it, and that's to hit the F3 key function key F3 is the paste name function. You get a list of all your names, click on the one you want, hit OK. So there we are, we don't have to uh, remember it. And the match function also takes an optional third parameter. I'm going to put a zero in there for an exact match. Now I've put data validation on so I shouldn't need an exact match, but bell and braces. And I want the first of the month, so the day number, once I put the second column, comma in, the day number is just day number one. So there we go. Date of 2010 find August in that list which should be the eighth value so that'll put an eight in there and the day number is one. Hit enter and there we are. So if I change August to December you can see that says 1st of December 2010. Okay so that's the date function. Next thing we want to do is find out what day of the week it is and for that we need another function called weekday. There we are and you can see there are two things in the brackets potentially. If it's in square brackets that means it's optional. So um, the first thing is the serial number which is just the date that we want to find the, the weekday of. The return type, if you want to know what that is, whenever you get one of these prompts when you're entering a formula you can click on the function name and that takes you to the help file for that function. And here we are, here's the weekday function help and you can see there are three possible options for um, what you put in as that second value and it tells you what happens if you leave it out and actually I want this first one so I'm just going to leave it out. So there we go, weekday of C2 and that tells me that the 1st of August 2010 was a Sunday. So now I'm going to put a formula in the top left hand column, uh, top left hand cell of my um, calendar and <clears throat> we're just going to do a calculation with dates here. Now if you remember dates are just numbers if I take the 1st of August 2010 and change the formatting to general, you'll see that the 1st of August 2010 was day number 40,391. 40, so the 2nd of August is 40,392 and so on. Started at the 1st of January 1900 and goes from there. And that's where we're, sort of where we're up to. So let's change that back to uh, short date so we can see what's going on. But it means we can do a calculation with a date because it's just a number. So I'm going to take that date subtract off the weekday and add one. And what you'll see in a second is that it produces another date uh, puts the 1st of August in on the Sunday. And then here I'm just going to take the 1st of August and add one. Remember it's just a date, it's just a number, so I just add one to it. 1st of August you get 2nd of August. Copy that formula across and I'm also going to copy it down as well. Now in one of these tables you need potentially six rows. So there we go there's six rows of dates. You can see here this one is adding up nothing, adding one onto nothing, so you get the 1st of January 1900, and as I say, 
the number 1 is 1st January 1900, so there we go. But here, what we want is that Saturday plus 1. And then I'm going to copy that down. So there we go. So now we've got a whole set of dates. It's populated the correct dates. Um, several things that we still need to do. The first one is that we want to um, get rid of the month and the year. And the second thing we want to do is we want to get rid of everything that's not in August. So, let's get rid of the month and the year first. Now, this is just a number and it's just formatted in a particular way. So let's change the number formatting. It's set to a standard date format at the moment. So I'm going to go down, you can't see it off the bottom of this list, down to more number formats. If you're in 2003, format cells, format menu, format cells, and you'll get um, this dialog box. We want a custom number format. Hopefully this gives you a clue as to what we're about to do. Um, this shows you day, month and year. All we want is day. If I put a single D in, it doesn't put a leading zero in. If I put two Ds in, you can see the sample here, it'll put 01 for the first. But I don't want 01, I just want 1, so I'm going to put a single D in. Um, just for completeness, uh, D puts in the 1, DD puts in 01. If I put in DDD, it puts in Sunday. And if I put in DDDD, it puts in the full word. So you've got the full word the abbreviated word, a two-digit day number, or as many digits as you need. And I'm just going to stick with the single D. OK. And there we are. As if by magic, we have the day numbers, all beautifully uh, organised for us. So we're nearly there now. Um, I'm just going to change this month, because I want to pick a month that doesn't start on a Sunday. So let's uh, let's pick any other, any other month. There we are, September. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of these cells and these cells below that um, aren't in the month we're interested in. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to apply some conditional formatting. I'm going to do it in two stages so that you can see what's going on. Um, this will work in 2003 as well. Uh, you go to Format, Conditional Formatting. Um, in 2007 it's in the Styles group, which because I've contracted my window you can't really see. so. Let's go to Styles, Conditional Formatting, and I'm going to go right to the bottom, to, or near the bottom, to New Rule. And I'm going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now the dialog boxes in 2003 look a bit different. In the Conditional Formatting um, dialog box that you look at, you need to change the left-hand drop-down from Cell Value Is to Formula Is and then you'll be able to do exactly this. So, what's the conditional formatting? Well, remember, these are still day numbers. So, that's 40,391 or whatever it was, so this will be 40,390. So we know that these numbers actually are less than the first of the month. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, the formula, always start with an equal sign. Um, now, when you're writing a formula for conditional formatting, you're writing it for the cell that has focus. Now I've highlighted a range here and you can see that this one cell here is a slightly different colour and that means that has focus. So I'm actually writing this formula for cell A6. So A6 less than, and I'm going to put in C2. Uh, now you can see C2's got dollars, that means that when it applies to A7 it still uses C2 and when it applies to B7 it still uses C2 and so on. So dollars in the C2 anchor the C2. So I'm going to change the format and I'm going to make it a uh, very pale grey and italic. And there we go. So now that should apply very pale grey and italic for any of these numbers which are less than the first of the month which will basically be these three here. Okay. And there we go. So that's dealt with the ones before the month. Now we've got to deal with the ones after the end of the month. Now the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say if it's greater than or equal to the first of the month after this month here. So let's see how we do that. Let's go back to the conditional formatting and we'll go to manage rules. You can't quite see it at the bottom here. Manage rules and I'm going to edit this rule that I've already got. Now the formatting wants to apply if either this one that I've already got is true or the next bit's true. 
a6 is greater than or equal to and now I want to say the first of the next month so let's use the date function the year is just simply what's in c1 the month now I'm just going to take there's another function called month and I'm going to take the month out of the date that we've already calculated so that just simply extracts that month so that'll give me a 9, but actually what I want is the 1st of the 10th, if this is the 9th, so I'm going to add 1 to that. And then I want the 1st of the month, so there's the day. And close that bracket, that closes the date function here, and then close the bracket for the OR function on the outside. So just to summarise, this is saying A6 is greater than or equal to the date which is this year, and then one month bigger than the month in there and then the first of the month so hit OK hit OK and now everything that's bigger than the last day of the month goes grey and there we are, perpetual calendar change the month to July and it changes, change the year to 2012 and it changes and as you can see it recalculates the calendar based on that and raise out the days that we don't need. So that's it, a brief summary of uh, what calculations that you can do with dates and a few of the functions that you can use for dates. For more information or if you want to contact us about any of this go to our website www.ooth.co.uk um, and drop us uh, a comment.